This week we are looking into yet another paper which proposes transformers for vision called the Swin Transformer. And this paper comes from Microsoft Research Asia. What makes this paper special is that they are the first to propose a transformer based backbone architecture for visual tasks. We know of several convolutional neural network based uh, backbone architectures like AlexNet, VGGNet, ResNet and DenseNet but we are yet to find a standard transformer architecture for vision tasks. So will Swin Transformer change it all? Let's find out in this video. So what really is a backbone network? When you say you do computer vision, you're probably doing one of these tasks like um, detection, segmentation, post estimation, or even image synthesis or style transfer. For all of these problems, one of the fundamental steps is to extract features from the input images or videos. These backbone ne networks do precisely that. You take one of these convolutional neural network architectures like VGGNet or ResNet and input your image and you get some form of vector representation called the features and you use these features for further processing in order to solve your problem. As an example, uh, this is the architecture of the VGG network which is a classic feature extraction network. You can see that the network takes as input an image and converts it into some form of uh, feature representation which is a vector of size in this case is 1 by 1000 uh, but it can be any dimension say 1 by 512 or 256 one of the typical characteristics of these uh, convolutional neural network based backbone architectures is that the number of output channels increases uh, from 64 uh, to 128 and 256, 512 and so on. So when we look into Swin Transformers architecture, we should probably be looking for such an increase when we move down the layers. This is figure 3a from the paper which shows the model architecture. It has four main components. They are patch partition, linear embedding, swing transformer block and the patch merging. So if we understand each of these blocks then we pretty much understand the paper. So let's go through one by one. First comes patch partition. As the name suggests the image is partitioned into several small patches. So an image of size uh, height by width with three channels is divided into non-overlapping patches or tokens. In the paper they use a patch size of 4x4. Four four. So the dimension of each patch becomes 4x4x3 four four which is equal to 48 dimension. Then comes the linear embedding layer. This is just a vanilla neural network which takes an input of 48 dimensional vector of each patch and converts it into a C dimensional vector. So in the paper I think they have used a value of C to be um, 96, 128 and 192. Let's look at patch merging before looking into the main contribution of the paper which is Swin Transformer Block. Let's again look at a simple image composed of 8 by 8 pixels. Each patch in the image is a 4x4 four four pixel. Taking, talking in terms of patches, you have 2x2 two two patches. Now in patch merging, you take the 2x2 two two neighboring patches and merge or combine them together so that you get one patch in place of the 2x2 two two patches. But how do you implement patch merging? Simple. Again you use a linear layer which is nothing but a vanilla neural network. Now because we use a linear layer we have the ability to define the size of the output we want. Exploiting this advantage we double C so that C now becomes 2C. So the main intuition is that we have decreased the number of patches by 2 but we have increased C by 2 as well. In our example, we initially took uh, C to be 96. Going by that, at this stage, C will be um, twice that. 
This will be the output of stage 2 of the Swin transformer network. As you can see from the figure, the network has 4 stages. So at the end of stage 3 and stage 4, the size of each patch will be 16 by 16 and 32 by 32 respectively. So that's patch merging for you. Now we have one more main component of the network to look into and that's the Swin transformer block. Before looking into the Swin transformer block which modifies the multi-headed self-attention, let's look at the problem with multi-headed self-attention in classic transformer. Multi-headed self-attention is a standard attention mechanism in transformers. It works really well for language processing tasks, but images are different. In case of images, we divide the image into several non-overlapping patches. Even though we divide the input image into different patches, we still have to compute the self-attention for a given patch with all the other patches in the input image. So clearly, this becomes very compute in intensive, even for a reasonably large sized image. So to overcome this, what Swin Transformer introduces is called the windows. So a window divides the input image into uh, several parts. What we see here is the input image divided into four windows. After dividing into such windows, whenever we compute self-attention between patches within that window and we ignore the rest of the patches. So this is how a single Swin transformer block looks. Firstly, we can notice that a single layer of transformer is replaced by two layers, WMSA and SWMSA. W stands for window based and SW stands for shifted window. So let's see what is shifted window attention now. WMSA is where we divide the input image into four windows and compute attention for patches within the window. This is straightforward and happens in the first layer of the Swin transformer block. The next stage is the shifted window MSA. If you can recollect what happens in convolutional neural networks, there's a kernel that slides along the image and computes the outputs. But something like that is missing in transformers. So the solution they propose in this paper is to shift the window by two patches and then compute the attention within these windows. What's going on in the second layer of the Swin transformer is precisely that. Now you may ask, what can I do about this empty space created within, without any pixels? A naive solution is to zero pad that space. A more sophisticated solution, which they call cycle shifting in this paper, is when you copy over the patches on top to the bottom and from left to the right and also diagonally across to make up for the missing patches. With that, I think I've illustrated all of the ideas proposed in the paper. So let's now go back and have a look at the architecture once again. So we have covered patch partition. We also saw how they use the linear embedding layer to go from 48 dimension to C dimensions. We also saw the patch merging where we convert a 4x4 patch to a 8x8 patch. Finally, we saw about the Swin transformer block, which is the main contribution of the paper. Now, putting them all together and stacking them in four stages, you arrive at the Swin transformer network. So they don't just stop here. The paper also proposes four variants of the uh, Swin transformer architecture. And by changing the value of C, uh, from 96 to 128 and 192, you get these variants. You also change the number of blocks at each stage, say to from uh, 6 to 18 or uh, keeping them to uh, 2. You get uh, different sizes of the network with uh, compu different compute levels. Now that we have seen the architecture, let's see how Swin Transformer compares with Vision Transformers or VIT and Data Efficient Image Transformer or DEIT. Let's also see how 
It compares with the state-of-the-art convolutional network-based model for classification, which is efficient net. I think we are almost uh, there in terms of uh, comparison uh, with the efficient net, with the Swin Transformer uh, giving a top one accuracy of 84.2 versus efficient net giving an accuracy of 84.3. Uh, so I think uh, in future we'll have uh, a classification network more based on the uh, transformers for object detection they show results on the coco 2017 data set they also uh, chose four typical object detection frameworks like um, cascade mask rcnn atss and sparse rcnn for each of the detectors we can notice that using swin transformer as a backbone results in better average precision compared to a standard ResNet backbone, uh, once again uh, showing a huge promise towards replacing the ResNet based backbone uh, when it comes to uh, computer vision tasks. Um, so the next comes the uh, segmentation results. Uh, they show results on the widely used ADE 20K dataset, which has about 150 uh, semantic categories. Once again, we can notice that using Swin Transformer as a backbone does better when combined with the ResNet 101 or DATE, thereby showing a huge promise as a standard backbone architecture. So <clears throat> that was Swin Transformer and it's uh, promised to be a new state-of-the-art backbone architecture for Vision. I hope you found the video useful to understand the paper. Please let me know in the comments if you wish to see any other papers illustrated. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye.